Today's project will require the use of your colored pencils, a regular pencil, and a piece of white paper. Hi class, it's Mrs. Latinsky. We're back for another art project today. Today's theme is Valentine's Day, but don't worry if you don't want to draw a lot of hearts, you don't have to. You can adapt this to all kinds of different shapes you like and even different holidays if, you, if you'd prefer. We're going to study the element of art shape today. In, in this case, it's mostly hearts. And we're also going to study a principle of design called rhythm. Now, if you like music, you know all about rhythm. And instead of talking about rhythm in sound, we're going to talk about rhythm in visuals, in art, how we can represent a sense of rhythm by what we see in our art. And the artist I'm going to introduce you today, he does a great job at that. His name is Wassily Kad Kandinsky. He's a Russian artist. He lived a long time ago in 1866 is when he was born and he died in 1944. He's a very famous originator of abstract art. That's the kind of art that doesn't present reality exactly as we typically see it. Our artist today, Wassily Kandinsky, created this artwork. It's named Composition 8. You can see this at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. He created this in 1923. But what I want you to think about when you look at this is I would like you to think about music. Because one thing Kandinsky is famous for is how he liked to interpret music in his paintings. He would either listen to music or try to show what music would look like on the page. He shows something that you only hear, but he shows it with the sense of sight. Now, how do you accomplish this? Well, Kandinsky, he did this through showing different lines in a rhythm. So rhythm is when you have a repetition of certain elements to create a kind of mood in your artwork. Just like in music, there's a rhythm. You've got a drum beat and you have musical notes that get repeated over and over again. It creates a sense of rhythm you can dance to, you can clap your hands and snap your fingers to. Well, in this art, there's lots of things that get repeated in various regular intervals. You can see the lines, how they get repeated next to each other, several. Imagine that like a beat, boom, 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 with the three lines next to each other. Or even the circles, the concentric circles that are stacked on each other. Imagine that like a, a certain note that starts soft and gets stronger and stronger as it works its way out. That's a possibility as well. I'd like to show you what we're doing today. This is my daughter Grace's interpretation of this artwork. You'll notice in the center she created the shape of a heart and that shape expands outward in a regular rhythm. Just imagine the music of bump, 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 bump the beats as they go out. And if it's a heart, what would that make that beat? Well, of course, it makes it a heartbeat. So Grace chose to do one heart, two heart, three hearts layered. And then as she worked her way out, what she did is this scribbly line where she repeated different colors throughout. It's a pattern of colors. It goes yellow, I think it's red, pink, and then maybe blue, and it repeats itself as it travels out. And it pretty much fills the page. She chose to put a few other little hearts in the middle of this, but this one is the central heart where things beat out from. This is my daughter Lizzie's creation. She decided to do something different than a heart for hers, which is totally fine. It's actually time for Girl Scouts to start selling cookies. It's their cookie season and she's a Girl Scout. So she decided to do this with Girl Scout cookies. This is a s'mores cookie. This looks like a thin mint. Uh, I don't know what this is. This is one of the new lemon ones they have, something like that. But what she did is she took the basic shape of these cookies right in here. And then from each cookie, she built out this rhythm of these lines, the same kind of jagged lines. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. And it, this one fills up the entire page. Here's what I did. This is several heartbeats. What we have is one, two, three, four, five primary hearts here. And each of them is beating and radiating out in a general rhythm. And uh, you can do something like this in your own artwork if you want to use hearts, but this isn't the only shape you could use. But this is great for Valentine's Day to do a heartbeat. And you keep 
radiating out this rhythm and they start bumping into each other and it's until it goes out all off the edges of the page. When I was nine years old and in fourth grade, this is my art project. I wanted to make sure you could see it really clearly. Does that look familiar? This is the cover to a fiction story I wrote called My Incredible Powers. But you can see how I did this exact same design. I was obsessed with doing these rhythmic squiggles from a certain point. I think I'm going to do a couple hearts. You could do like what Grace did, one big heart and just focus on that and radiating out with a rhythm from that one. But I think I like it when I do a couple hearts, it's up to you, but I want a couple big hearts. So I'll do one big heart here. Now hearts, if you've never drawn a heart before, they're a little tricky, but not terrible. You have a big arch here and it goes down and arch on here. It's a mirror image on either side. It has bilateral symmetry because if I were to draw a line through the middle of it, this side matches this side. And it doesn't matter if they're not perfect. Sometimes they're skinny hearts and sometimes there's chubby hearts. My hearts tend to be a little on the chubby side and I like it that way. I think I'm gonna use cool colors for my hearts, which means I'm gonna have four different layers of squiggly lines. First thing, I'm gonna cover up this pencil. You wanna make sure your colored pencils are pretty sharp. So use the sharpener that came with your pack of pencils because otherwise you can't get a very fine line, which you'll need for both the heart, but also all the squiggles, keeping the squiggles so it's clear that the squiggles have a definition and aren't just a big old blurry mess. Now your squiggles should be roughly the same size. Oops. Because the rhythm is going to be consistent. Now if you want your squiggles could be radically different. Some can be small squiggles, some can be large gauge squiggles and that what that would show would be a change in the rhythm for the heart. Maybe the heart would beat faster on some lines and slower on other lines. You don't have to do all this artwork in one session. You can put it down, go do something else, come back when your hand recovers from all these squiggles because it can get a little sore. Now notice they're bumping into each other now, so I can't fill in the space between them as much, but then I just go where I can. With the next color. Here are all the squiggles completed, but you know, I think I really want to fill in these hearts with color too. When I color this heart, I'm going to try to keep my lines going one direction. I think that will be less confusing because so many of the other lines are so chaotic outside of it. I want to create a very smooth heart. Color. One other thing you could do here is um, write a cute little phrase like be mine or I don't know, I love you, just I heart you or something inside like those conversation hearts do. That would be really cutesy, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. I think I'll leave it plain. Thanks for taking the time to do art with me today. I had a great time and I hope you did too. Please take a moment and share your work with me. I'd love to see what you created.